week after the former governor Emeka Ihedioha reportedly declared his intention to seek re-election as Imo State governor come 2023, traditional rulers and uh, political stakeholders of the three senatorial zones in the state have requested that the former governor be interrogated for allegedly violating the provisions of the Electoral Act. Ihedioha had previously vowed to return as governor in Imo State come 2023. He said that no one would discourage him from his journey to actualize his dream. Well, joining us to discuss this is AIC Akwarandu. He's a policy analyst. Thank you very much, AIC, for joining us. Uh, we're having connection problems with Mr. Akwarandu. Well, we'll take a quick break and bring you a, a report from Nigerians and how they feel about the NSARS situation. Stay with us. There is nothing wrong in getting protection for them. But again, uh, see, uh, in, in, in Yoruba language, eh, it says if you not do something behind, as in something hidden, you shouldn't be scared. You should not be scared of, okay, if, if truly the lawyers came out to say the truth, you know, about whatever the investigation or whatever happens during the answers, which we all know or are aware of, you understand? I don't, I don't think they should be scared of maybe anybody threatening them, you understand? Or if there's anybody threatening them, they should be exposed. See, what they did is very commendable. I mean, the panel, they did their constitutional duty, taking their time to find out the truth, and they are published the truth. Now if they are getting threats, it's the responsibility of the government to protect them. So there is no, we don't even have to be discussing this at all, you understand? It should be the fundamental right, you understand? A threat to life under the condition is a crime. So they have to be protected one way or the other by the government because they are, they've done their job, a very good job as, as, as for that matter. So there is no good thing about that. That's what, should be do. That's what ought to be done. It's necessary to, for them to be immune because if they are immune, it's helped, it will help them to be able to perform very well. And because of the insecurity nature of the country Nigeria we are, I believe if they, have, if they, if they are protected, it will also help them. First of all, they are citizens of the country. The government should protect them. And um, it's a very, very sensitive um, issue that happened. And uh, at this point, I, I think there's no reason why more lives should go down. Let's get to the bottom of it. Everybody should own their responsibilities, take actions for their responsibilities, and we move on from it. Simple uh, apologies, um, reaching out to the families, because, I mean, people actually died. To be honest with you, people actually died. So let's stop these, these jokes about people not dying or, or whatnot. And then we can move on. If, if, we, if we know we want the next generation and the next two generations to, to know that we did the right thing as a government and as a people, then we should own up to, to, to the issues and face them. Apologies for the connection hiccups. We're still being joined by AIC Akarandu, a policy analyst. Uh, we're still looking at the recent developments in Imo State. And of course, um, um, the former governor is saying that nothing is going to get in the way of him, um, you know, actualizing his dream of being the governor of the state. But then we're hearing that religious leaders um, um, were hearing that leaders of thought in the, the state and even political stakeholders are saying that he has one way or the other um, contravened the Electoral Act. Do you agree with this position? The truth is that uh, the state government is just looking for a diversionary measure. They want a situation where people can be distracted from the real issues. So that questions can not be asked about what our pensioners are passing through since the last two years of this administration. They don't want people to notice that civil servants have been passing through one verification or the other since the past two years. They don't want anybody to ask about what is happening with the local government funds and other maladministration that is happening. That is why they are using Nihediyoha as a distraction. And unfortunately for them, the people are not buying into that. Imolites are wiser. They have shown that they know what is happening. 
and they have shown that they cannot be deceived. Ihedoha has not declared for governorship. And if you listen to his speech very well on that day, he said he didn't come for campaign. And there is no way one could have said that Ihedoha is violating electoral law. There is nothing like that. The Ebu declaration was not a program of a political party. It was not organized by any political party. It was organized by a pressure group. And in that place that day, you have the chairman of both uh, other political parties. I remember vividly, I saw the chairman of Ab Gaidimo State. He spoke at that event. So it is insensitive for anybody to say that the program was organized by the PDP in the first place. It's all part of diversionary measures. Okay, but secondly, I, there is quick, nothing stopping in head your hand. Quick question from running for governorship come twenty twenty four. Okay, you you just asked, answered my question because I was going to ask: Does he really uh, have an intention to run for governorship? And um, yes, yes. Yes, that is, he has. He has. But at the right time, he will let him know about his ambition. Because the truth as of today is that the vast majority of Fundimo are yearning for Ihedoha to come back. They want those things he started in his administration. That calmness they witnessed for several months. What the things, what that things, we are being what paid, things did we are start? in their homes receiving a lot. I'm curious. What without troubles. Uh, according the to the civil servant. Can you hear me? What things did I can hear what you. things did he start? Because I remember vividly while he was still uh, in let, let, let me hear you. Let me hear you. What did you say? What you're saying that the people of Imo are yearning for him to return to start to continue the things that he started. And I'm curious, what things did he start that he needs to continue? That is what I'm telling you. That under seven months, when Ihedoha was the governor, there was an absolute calmness. Confidence was restored among the people. Let me give you an instance. Within that period, there was a, an incident at Hobo where the police station was burned down. In less than 10 hours of that incident, Ihedoha was in Hobo to console with the family, to sympathize with the Nigerian police force, and to calm the situation in the area. That is leadership. But we have a situation where issues happen in Imo State. Over 24 hours, nobody says anything. No government talks. Unless the people continue to shout on social media before you can see government talk. As of today, there is a leadership vacuum that is being yet to be filled. And Imolites cannot wait for this administration to end so that they can vote in a responsible government that can fix their roads, that can fix their roads, and they know that these roads are fixed up to start that. Look at Port Harcourt Road. Look at Poly Record Junction. That was where Buhari commissioned when he was in Imo State. Sorry, fixing of roads. That place is, is, is almost is that, is that, today. Is that, is that something that I should vote for a person? I mean, fixing of roads is what you should do with taxpayers' monies. It's not a project that I should can be applauding you for. Let me get you. It's let not, me get you. Is it also something that you put in a scorecard? Because I, I think we have misplaced priorities now. Fixing a road is the job of every single governor. Fixing a road is the job of every single governor because taxes are paid for those things to be done. It should not be a reason why I should vote a person in because that's that person's responsibility, isn't it? I, I, I am not at your question. I want to get you clear. You're making a case for fixing roads and you're making um, you know, reference to River State's roads. Um, and I'm wondering to myself, fixing a road should not be a, a, a reason why I would vote a person into power because originally that's their job i pay taxes for that reason no 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 let me let me let me educate you on that quickly before because we because because of the mal administration we have in Imo state under the apc leadership for the past eight years fixing a road has become 
a big deal for Ndimo. It's unfortunate. Because when you go to other states like River State, Ebony, even Ebony State here, even Enugu, they have all gone above us. But today in Imo State, you will agree with me that for the past seven, for the past nine years, we've had APC leadership in this state. We cannot boast of one particular road without Portugal. Mm. And I want to be proved wrong. Well, so that is why fixing a road has become a big deal for Ndimo. Because okay. you need to fix the rural roads. You okay. need to reduce rural urban migration. Okay. So that somebody in the Hitu Burma does not need to come to a way to do business. Okay. Somebody in Ono does not need to come to a way to do business. Somebody okay. in the Ahira Junction does not need to come to a way to do business. Okay. They can get what they want. Mr. They Kwan, can you... access their rural roads. Mr. Kwan, and they have their local we're, government we're out of time. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Uh, um, this is because of the hiccups that we had with our connection, but we want to appreciate you. We're hopefully going to have you back to discuss more on this. AIC Akwarandu is a policy analyst and he's joining us from Emo State. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Th th thank you. God bless you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us and being part of the conversation. Um, we want to appreciate you. Um, don't forget, you can watch a replay if you missed the whole show on our YouTube channels at Plus TV Africa and at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Mariana Cohn. Do have a good evening. See you tomorrow. <laughs>